Much of the work in the DoTag method is done using the JSP context object. The JSP context object provides us some useful methods, some of which are the get out method, which returns a JSP writer. Remember, the uh, work of our custom tag is going to be done in the rendering or the output from a JSP. So in fact, we're working with a JSP writer, not a system writer or a print writer as we normally would from an HTTP servlet. We're not working with output streams, uh, whatever. We're working with JSP Writer, okay? The JSP Writer is used from the do tag method to write whatever output the tag wants to write along with the rest of the HTML markup. Along with get out, there's a set attribute method, which does exactly what it says. It allows us to set an attribute of um, an object value and key it off of the string by specifying the name. It saves this object in the page scope, essentially defining a variable that can be used to share data with other tags that are on the page. Along with set attribute is, of course, get attribute, which retrieves a value, returns an object from within the page context. So we also have that available to us in the do tag method. And of course, this is interesting, a find attribute method. Find attribute method searches for an object starting in the page scope, the request scope, the session scope, and finally in the application scope. So it allows us to get an attribute without specifically knowing what the scope of that attribute might be because our custom tag code is going to operate within the context of a JSP. An example of using the JSP context object to find a variable. In our do tag method, very simple, normal Java code, line item i equals whatever it is we want to do um, to create a line item object, and then call the set attribute method directly by calling the implicit method get JSP context. So we're setting an attribute, keying it off of the string value item, and the object value is whatever is in i of type line item. Handling the body of a tag. If a tag does not support a body, then nothing needs to be done in the Java class. In the TLD file, um, you would set the body content element within the tag to literally the word empty. If the tag contains a body but does not process the content in any way, then make sure that the do tag method makes a call to the invoke method of the JSP fragment body object and pass a null value. An example of doing this is literally from the get JSP body static method, call the invoke method and pass the null value. Finally, if a tag needs to process the body content, it needs to supply an object of type string writer to the invoke method. This is where the body content will be written. So here we see an example of the do tag method. Notice we're instantiating a new string writer object. We're calling the invoke method on the JSP body fragment um, and passing it the string writer instance that we created. Now our um, string writer object is used to process the body content. In this case, we're just uh, converting the body content um, to uppercase, calling the string method to uppercase on a string conversion of the string writer and printing that out in the body. In these two cases where the body is processed or unprocessed, um, you would set the body content element in the tag library descriptor, the TLD. You would set that to either literally the string tag dependent for Java EE um, specification or the word script less um, for backward compatibility with J2EE 1.4. To implement a tag that iterates over content, the steps are very easy. You still implement the do tag method, and within the do tag method, you iterate over the collection that you want to process within your tag. For each item in the collection, save the item object in a JSP variable, then call the invoke method on the JSP body. The example we see here 
is um, exactly what we've been doing. We're implementing the do tag method. We're creating a list, in this case just two strings. Um, we're creating an iterator and we're iterating over the list. But notice in the while loop, during the iteration, we're actually defining a variable, setting attribute on JSP context. So in JSP context, using get JSP context, we're calling set attribute and we're setting an attribute called i to whatever it is we are discovering in our iteration. And then we call invoke and we call, uh, we pass the null object. In the JSP page, what we would see, in other words, for the JSP developer, how would they use this tag? In their tag, um, if the tag is actually named example, the content is processed by the do tag method in the custom tag. The tag has a body, and from the body, we can access the uh, i variable as set in the do tag method inside of our loop. In defining tags in our tag library descriptor, our TLD file, it is possible to nest elements together in what's called a hierarchical relationship or a parent-child relationship, just as you would in XML. In working with custom tags, it's possible for a child tag to access elements or properties of the parent tag. The getParent method returns the tag's immediate parent. This is the vocabulary that's used in XML and a hierarchical structure. The returned type from get parent is type JSP tag, which is the root interface for all JSP custom tags. You need to make sure to typecast it to a specific class before you call any of the parents' methods. This is standard uh, Java programming. So a call to get parent needs to be cast to the specific custom class that you're interested in working with. And so within our Java code, we can then execute whatever logic we want to, which is actually defined in the parent tag logic. If there's a deep nesting of tags, the quickest way to locate a parent tag by its class is to actually call uh, the method findAncestor with class. It's a utility method that's provided to us by the use of the simple tag support class, extending this class. So an example of using findAncestor with class, this, you specify the class name dot class and the find ancestor with class will actually locate it. You still have to do the type casting on the return value. Using this approach, a child tag can collaborate with its parents. For example, a parent can open a database connection that all the child tags then have use of. There is no way, however, uh, for a parent, <laughs> I find this an interesting statement being a parent myself. There's no way for a parent to directly access its child's tags. The only way for uh, communication to happen is for the parent to create variables that the child tags can use. It's always difficult to communicate with your children speaking as a parent myself. Let's take a look at implementing some of the sample code that we've seen to create an iteration tag. So let's take a look at creating a more complex custom tag. As a Java developer, I'm trying to incorporate more complex um, code and do it in Java so that my JSP developer can use the tag and get the um, more complex rendering facilities um, without having to use more complex JSTL tags or write inline Java code. I'm going to create another tag, but this time instead of uh, starting it from scratch through the magic of computers, I'm actually going to add um, my custom tag class by dragging it uh, from Windows Explorer, dragging it, if I can position my windows correctly, right on top of the package where I want to drop it. And you can see that my mouse changes to a plus. The tool asks me if I want to copy the file, and I say, okay, I know what I'm doing. And a quick look at this Java code. It's packaged correctly. It extends simple tag support. But what is it that this um, 
code is actually going to do. Um, I've implemented the do tag method. I'm working with the JSP context object to get a print writer. I'm sorry, not a print writer. Remember, we're working with JSPs. We're actually going to get a JSP writer. And I'm going to begin generating some output from this tag. I have a private variable called list. I have a set list, right? I have a set list, so I have a class variable called list. I have a set list so that I can populate that field inside of the content of my code. I'm actually going to um, use the list in a for um, loop structure or a for structure in Java. This is a new Java 5 structure in a for loop. If you're used to seeing um, the for and the three arguments separated by a semicolon where you, are, you provide an integer, you provide a stop point, you provide uh, an integer, changer, an increment or a decrement. Uh, this is a new for structure where it automatically essentially does a for each, which Java has never had. Um, essentially doing a for each loop uh, for each item in the list. It's going to populate a local variable called uh, O in this case. Inside of my list, I'm going to create a new employee, get the first name, get the middle name, get the last name. Um, I, so I'm calling general uh, getters on these um, names and print out all of the values from inside of my do tag method. So essentially, I'm creating an iterator, but I'm doing it inside of do tag. There's no special method implementation that needs to be done here. Now, I want to provide this tag functionality along with another tag that I have um, that does something completely different. In order to provide both of these tags to my JSP developers, I can create additional tag library descriptors to uh, configure them in the server environment or the application environment. I can also add to existing tag library descriptors by creating another tag element. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I've got a uh, very simple tag library descriptor in the web INF subdirectory. I'm going to open this up. I've already got one tag defined. Uh, the one tag is called custom sample. It's a different Java class, right? So I'm going to add another one. And this one I'll just copy and paste the necessary tag elements into this tag file instead of creating a new one. So um, I've got the tag element. The name is going to be employee list. Notice that the tag class extends, or uh, the tag class is actually the tag code that I just created. The body content is empty, but I'm going to define that my tag takes an attribute. The attribute is uh, named list. The type is of type collection. Um, it is a required attribute. And the runtime expression value is set to true so that the expression will actually be evaluated at runtime. This is the only piece of um, my tag library descriptor that I need to add to um, my existing tag library descriptor. OK? So I'm defining exactly, I'm, I, as a Java developer, I'm writing my Java code, employee list tag, custom tag, whatever functionality I want to be able to give to the JSP developer so that they can uh, streamline their JSP development. I can do it in one TLD file or however it makes sense for my project. I can organize the tag configuration into one TLD file or multiple TLD files, whatever makes sense um, for my custom tag development. So I save this. Now I'm going to switch over to be a JSP developer. JSP developer that's been making use of um, my custom tags and has been um, frustrated with not understanding some of the more complex JSTL tags, Java standard tag uh, library tags. Okay. So in my uh, list employees, 
I already have my uh, JSP developer is already using my tag library. Okay, um, he's already using uh, he or she is already using my custom sample tag, the first tag that I had to find in my TLD file. I want at this point underneath employee list, I want my t uh, tag library or uh, sorry, my JSP developer. I want them to be able to use my new tag very simply. Okay. So um, I told him in an email or her, I told them, I said, just paste this in, paste this code in um, to your JSP and everything will be fine. Well, it's not exactly fine. The JSP developer has to be able to know that this prefix for E doesn't match the prefix he defined in his JSP for this tag library. So in the tag lib directive, I defined a prefix for my tag. The JSP developer has to have a little bit of skill to be able to know that, yeah, although I was sent a um, lines, just paste this in, it'll work. A JSP developer still has to be able to understand that what they're doing is calling a tag from a tag library descriptor. Okay, so if I save this, and again, I'm not going to test the JSP, I'm testing the servlet that calls the JSP. But what should happen is the server is stopped, it needs to be republished, but it'll publish when I uh, start the server up. But what should happen is that right here, first off, uh, here, I'm using, uh, as a JSP developer, I'm using one tag. Here, I'm using another tag. I have one tag library descriptor file um, declared using the taglib directive. For the Java developer, they've got two different uh, custom tags, something called custom tag and employee list tag. And they generally, generally it's the Java developers that provide the uh, tag library descriptor, the TLD file, and the TLD file is written in traditional XML. So in order to run this, we're not running the tag code, we're running JSPs or servlets that make use of the tags, just like we do with uh, standard tag libraries. So I'm going to right click on list employees, and I should see when I choose run as run on server, I'll see JBoss build my application, start up the server, and what I should see at right that point when the JSP is rendered with a very simple JSP syntax using a tag called employee list and, and setting the attribute list, setting the value to something called employees, which is magically set in one of the four scopes that I have available to me, I should see the browser come up and et voila, there it is. So very simple JSP, very simple tag. The work and the programming skill is pushed off to, in the separation of, of and specialization of job roles, the work for a simple iteration tag is pushed back to the Java developers to write a custom Java code. This also applies not just uh, for simplifying your JSPs, but where you have relatively complex uh, rendering logic, it may make more sense um, to create custom tags and make them more reusable rather than reusing standard tags individually in each JSP.